Hi, I'm Cora. Hi, I'm Steph. And today we're talking about trans visibility. Am I? I don't know. Really <laughs> So why is it important to talk about trans topics? It's important because it allows people who aren't trans to understand um, not just the general kind of discrimination that trans people face, but all the little things that come with it as well. So like casual misgendering in everyday life, little instances of transphobia that kind of build up uh, in bigger ways. And I think it just kind of makes people more understanding as well of different aspects because there is such a wide scope underneath the trans umbrella. It's like a whole spectrum and there's so much that people, I think, still don't know about. And for people that don't know what it is, can you explain what misgendering is? I use he, him pronouns. So anyone, for example, who would call me she or call me a girl, that would be misgendering because they'd be calling me the wrong thing. Why is trans visibility important? For a lot of young trans people, seeing themselves reflected in media, in the news, in a positive light, uh, in books, in anything, can kind of not only help them kind of figure out who they are and relate to people and say, oh, you know, I feel that way as well. I, you know, found a good label for myself. But I think it just helps people feel less alone. And seeing that representation uh, in things is always really nice and affirming. You know, when you get a movie or a book and it has a trans protagonist and they're written well and accurately and, you know, you can see yourself reflected in them, it's always just a really nice thing. There's like really like horrible figures of like 80% of young trans people feeling unsafe at school. Mm -hmm. How do you think that trans visibility could help that? Just going into an environment where you know that people are educated and will know about your identity and will respect you is such, it makes such a difference because I know when I go into a room and if I know that there are people who potentially might have a problem with my identity, it automatically just sets me on edge, makes me uncomfortable. So if you pair that with you know, a school environment where they're surrounded by the same people every day, they're actually trying to learn and make friends and just enjoy it. You're meant to enjoy school. Even things like teachers misgendering students and not allowing students, for example, to change in the changing rooms they want to change in for mm. PE um, and use the bathroom they want to use. All these little things add up and can lead to people feeling really down. Suicide rates, self-harm rates, it's all so elevated. And then it's added to if trans people are in environments where they're not understood and not respected. So what are some things that we could do to help with trans visibility? People with bigger platforms, to use their platforms to spread awareness for the trans community, to use the correct terminology, uh, to talk about the importance of respecting trans identities, especially um, binary trans identities are a little bit more understood nowadays, but with non-binary identities, there is still so much misinformation. So the binary trans versus like non-binary, mm -hmm. do you want to explain a little bit about what you meant by that. So when you have binary trans identities, you can have binary trans men that are like me and then binary trans women. Um, and then non-binary identities are kind of people that could either fall in between those identities or just completely outside. Because there are some people that feel like they are a bit of both. There are some people that some days might feel more male, some days might feel more female. And then there are some people that don't identify with any gender. Um, and then the great thing about the non-binary label is underneath it, um, or a whole little bunch of identities that people can choose from depending on how they feel. So I think that's important. And also a lot more education just in schools, in like, you know, PSHE yeah. lessons. I would have loved it if in school they'd had trans education and just LGBT plus education in general, because I knew nothing growing up in school. I was so behind because I didn't have the education. I only learned about it when I really got onto the internet and made a bunch of um, LGBT plus friends. And that's when it helped me to kind of learn about all these different identities and then kind of figure out where I fit. And it was a lot less scary because I had words for how I was yeah. feeling. If you see or hear somebody say something that is kind of transphobic, mm -hmm. what kind of things should you do in that situation? Help any way you can, even if it's just if you see something online, like someone making a nasty comment either report them, you can do that, or if it's someone making a comment that's not so much nasty but just ignorant, you can just gently try to educate them. That's what I try and do. And then if they refuse to listen, then you can just block them. Especially when it comes to some trans issues, people feel like they can ask really personal questions. Yeah, this is a big problem that myself and a lot of trans people deal with. Um, I completely do understand people's curiosity. Um, and I'm totally fine with the odd question here or there. You know, it's a very personal, private thing. If people offer to volunteer that information, then that's totally fine. And it's important to state that not all trans people transition the same way. For example, not all trans guys go on testosterone or uh, have surgery. Um, and the same for trans women. Some non-binary people do 
physically transition, some don't. It's all entirely subjective to that individual's experience. And every trans person is as valid as the other, regardless of what they're doing, what stage of transition they're at, whether they're transitioning or not. If you don't have anybody in your life who you can kind of lean on to support you, what could you do? I um, mean, obviously, Childline is one that offers a lot of support for trans people. If you don't have support directly in your home life, you could sometimes, if you're in school, you could turn to a teacher. If there's, mm -hmm. a, if there's a teacher you know will be understanding. If you have just somebody to talk to and somebody who understands you and respects your identity, it makes such a difference. Yeah, there's always support out there. Definitely. And you can contact Childline anytime online or on the phone. So if you have a friend that's struggling with their gender identity, what could you do to show that you're a safe space? Definitely educate yourself. Uh, show them that you're going out of your way to learn about trans identities and trans experiences. Um, even something as simple as asking, hey, what pronouns do you prefer? Or would you like me to call you a different name? And then if they say yes, doing that for them. And then it's really important, I think, to educate yourself as well as a trans ally. If I heard a trans ally say, oh yeah, something about gender neutral pronouns or even just respecting identities, it's so lovely to see someone making the effort. And it, again, it does, it creates a safe environment because you feel safe and comfortable with that person and you know that you can just be yourself and there's not a risk of, of negative retaliation. It's refreshing if somebody's educated enough to know not to just assume someone's gender and to use gender neutral pronouns until they know. Thanks so much for coming in today. Thank you for having me, it's been really fun. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.